watching us online and we are passionate here in building people in fact god has called us to bring them as many that have been saved build them up to maturity and be able to send them forth to make a change in the society that god has planted them the word of the lord in our mouth is so strong and sweet having the capacity to be able to stir up a new revival a new insight and passion towards your destiny as you join us this morning get ready for a word from the lord that's going to shape you and sometimes chastise you because of what god is dealing his with your life so i'm trusting god that this service is going to bless you in case you live in medway environment this is a place to be on site so join us in service let's trust god for a word from the throne of grace god bless you so me yesterday when they were asking us to identify his body, I saw babies in the mortuary. I saw young, I saw old. They were not covered. I'm like, God, life is beautiful. As we went to bury him, another bus came. And I went to check the obituary, 34 year old man. So I was crying, oh, my dad didn't live a longer life, 72. But there's another family bearing 34 year. And that tells me that please, when it comes to thanking God, let's do it intentionally. Let's just celebrate him for the gift of life. You could have died in your sleep last night and nothing will have happened. I tell you, people will have moved on. I've never seen anyone that died and things just stopped. No. Even among family. After some times, everybody will pick up. HIC this morning, I want you to look back. Look at where God brought you from. That you didn't die in that sickness. That sickness did not, did not consume you. Oh, that pain, that shame. <laughs> hey, Pasaka Leke, you don't look like what you've been through. <laughs> hey, somebody celebrate God in the house this morning. Let's your worship God to him and say, Lord, it is you I glorified. It is you I celebrate. It is you. It is you I worship this Sunday morning. I know it is the 14th day of but I offer my thanks given to you, the keeper of Israel. Oh, my Thank you, Jesus. Oh, the Sammy says we should thank him. He said we should praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm, Psalm 7, 17. Psalm 7, 17 says, I will give thanks to the Lord because of his righteousness. Not my righteousness. Because of his righteousness. I will sing the praises of the name of the most high God. What name do you call him this morning? Hey, what name? The last one week, who is God to you? I want you to call him by his name. For me, I choose to call him as a strengthener. <laughs> hey, destiny supporter. <laughs> Ocean divider, miracle working God. <laughs> hey, what do you call him, HIC, this morning? <laughs> Use an agency that best describe God to you this morning. <laughs> In a house of worship, <laughs> say, Lord, this is who you, you have to be to me you've been my helper you've been my helper you've been my helper you have make way where there seems to be no way you strengthen my heart despite the pain despite the challenges oh mercy keeps speaking grace i see thank you jesus thank you jesus Okay, for two minutes, can you lead us in that song again? Magabongwe, hallelujah, magabongwe, everybody say Oh! 
give the Lord a big clap offering. A big clap offering. It's an offering. It's an offering. Offering. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Be glorified. Let's have a seat in his presence. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Stockway, for the prayer section. Thank you, Ron Care, for the administration leading us to worship the king of glory god bless you in jesus name hallelujah it's so good to see everyone in church this sunday morning the 14th day of april 2024 i was saying to someone in at work on friday i said soon it will be christmas because i maybe i'm so i'm looking forward to christmas in april amen before you know it we'll be here saying that merry christmas you know so we thank god for the gift of life I pray that the Lord God Almighty will strengthen our hearts and give us joy. He said to us this year, he said that the saints of water, we will bud and we will blossom. This is our testimony. I will rejoice with you. You will rejoice with me. There will be much more party in this house this year in the name of Jesus Christ. So on behalf of Pastor, I welcome every one of us here on ground and online to his influence church. This is an assignment that God has given to us to start a multicultural church here in Medway. We are here to emphasize kingdom growth, maturity, and ministry among saints. It's my prayer, it's my desire that you will be blessed as you listen to the word of God today and as our, our ministry become and our ministry will become will be a blessing to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So pastor will be ministering today. How many of us are excited about that? I'm always looking forward to pastor ministry. So when the flyer, and most times I don't ask him what you are preaching. I don't like familiarity, you know. You, you have to respect the man of God. So I don't do familiarity. Amen. So when the, when the flyer came, authority of the believer, I'm like, wow, I need it. Oh, Jesus Christ, I need this. I need to understand the authority. Not that I don't know, but the authority I have as a believer. See, hey, they said the higher you go, the, the, the devil that as in, <laughs> you just don't know. That sometimes uh, in the middle of the night, you call the devil for battle. I say, it's between me and you. Leave that person. But then if I don't know my authority in Christ, sometimes it might shit me. Amen. And sometimes that is, is that not even our testimony? Is that not our experiences as believers? We don't even know what we are meant to take hold of. Hallelujah. Because we don't even know the word. You know, when the scripture says, I remember that scripture, I learned that in a children's church, when they said they're nothing by, uh, hey, Luke 10, 19. I have given you authority. Luke 10, 19. I have given you authority to trample up on snakes and scorpions, and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. This is the word of God. But then, if you don't know the authority you have about the word, there's another, it's, it's one thing to know the word. It's another thing to know that there is authority back in the word. Hallelujah. That there is an authority back in the world. When you've been stopped by the police, God forbid you've been stopped by the police, even though they will say, ma'am, they will respect you, they will, you know, but there's something they are representing that that word is coming with authority. And in your mind, you are like, God, please, I don't want points. I am begging you, no points on my license. <laughs> but they are treating you well, but you know beyond that word that there is an authority. They will tell you, she said to you, oh, you're speeding, ma'am. Yeah, da, 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 da. No, me, I've never had points, so, but I, <laughs> I have seen people or I've watched. And they'll keep respecting you, they'll keep giving you that word. And they'll say, oh, six points. And you're like, oh my God. So they issued the word, but authority went with it. Why? Because they are police. 
Amen. Imagine, let's say the queen, the king, we don't have queen again. Let's say the king says he's coming to Medway. He's, he will send his word that is coming to Medway. And you see everybody. And I pray it comes so that all the portals in Medway <laughs> will be fixed. Medway Council, if you are here, you need to do something about the portals. And you know, every, he has sent his word. But everybody, because that word is not just, if, if I say I'm coming to, yes, I'm going to a great center now, who knows me? It's just a word. There is no authority behind that word. But if the king said he's coming, there is an authority. So if his, his influence shows this morning, we will be understanding in the place of listening to the word of God. Another dimension, what is expected of us, the authority we carry in God. is another time to learn. Let there be a shift. But then it will only come if your heart is open. Hallelujah. For me, I'm saying, Lord, just a word. I don't need, if pastor might preach for one hour, but Lord, just send one word to me. Because that is the word I'm taking back to my prayer, to my, to my prayer altar. I just need to discover. I just need to do some things. I've been praying. I've been doing some things. But I want to know much more. The authority I carry as a believer. Let our hearts be open. Let there be no distraction. Receive the word of God. Oh, heartedly, receive it. Be a sponge that will take all the water. Just take it in. Then you might go home, just like the burial Christian, begin to dissect. Does that, does that, does this happen? But receive it first. Amen. Receive it first. Let the word come to you. Have a heart that is open. And if you are on, on site and you're washing, I pray you will not be distracted. I tell you. But please, Act as if you are with us. <laughs> if that will help you psychologically. Act as if you are with us. Let there be no distraction. And I pray that we all, online, on ground, everyone, and those that will watch this message thereafter, we will help the bless in Jesus' name. HIC, let's welcome Pastor as a minister of the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning. I said, good morning. good morning. I feel the Lord is in the answering prayer mode. I feel, that, I feel that in my spirit. And this morning, I want you to put a prayer point in your heart. I want to put a prayer point in your mouth. I don't know what it is. But I believe, I perceive the Lord is in the prayer answering mood. And if we just maximize the opportunity, can you put a prayer point in your mouth and say, God, I need you to show up. I need you to be visible over my life. I need you to do what daddy cannot do, what mommy cannot do, what pastor cannot do. Put a prayer in your mouth. Kavalambra sofeleke prakusifelege boshi kapala. Put a prayer in your mouth. Put a prayer in your mouth. That God do what no man can do. Do what no man can do. God is erasing shame. Is erasing shame. Yes, he's breaking barriers. Yeah, he's setting you up for something new and something mighty. And something powerful. Yes, there is no shame in the house. But mercy of the Lord supersedes. Cavalambro cosi valagadasha, ika palandone begin brakusi pelege de brosi palasha, elimba katofekete pele begeden brakutu peleke sita, yando zagovre gedimbra katile vekembra gazabro lozebele, ya golobo zebegede bosha gomba baba lagaba. I will turn again and again. I will turn. I want you to amplify your faith, grow your faith right now. Believe, be desperate, be desperate. Put a prayer, you know, insist, insist, insist that God will rise in his righteousness and comfort his people. Say, comfort you, comfort you, my people. For the Lord will rise and comfort his people again. Lendoza kovra gandebele ke prokoziva labo laba. For the Holy Ghost that is inside of you is about to showcase his power. For that which is inside of you is about to show up on the outside. Yes. 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 
Oh, thank you, precious Father. We give you praise, Lord. Lord, confirm your word. Let there be explosion of the miraculous in the lives of your people. Mark it again, again and again, that you are not mate with the devil. That you are superior in everything you do. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Come on, put your hands together. Let's give Jesus some good praise this morning. Hallelujah. As our customer, can you walk up to two or three people and just give them a hug and tell them that you're welcome to God's presence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on, give somebody a hug, show some love, show some kindness. Praise God. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. The Lord bless and honor and increase you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. We'll glorify your name. Praise God. Let's have a seat in God's presence. You know, just to let you know that the camera is at the back now. So all the shakings is straight on the camera. No, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> all the shaking is straight on the camera. Praise God. Yeah, we, I will go to apologize for this uh, keyboard not working today, but whatever the case, let's say appreciate Ayo. <laughs> Amen. Because you can hear that the sound is better. Now, can't you feel it? Yeah, you can feel it too. I know it's because of the choir. <laughs> Praise God. They were, they were there for a whole day on, on uh, what day is that? Can you reduce the volume. Uh, the power is too much. Reduce a bit. <laughs> when you get there, I'll tell you, give me power. <laughs> is it Thursday? Yeah, they were here on Thursday. It's like 10 p.m. 20 something. So the sound is beautiful. And you can see the speaker downstairs too. Did you feel that? Oh, yeah. Praise God. Come on. Let's thank God now. Come on. Let's thank God. Yeah. Who said who? Is it okay? Is Bio, what happened to you today, Bio? That is your signature. Huh? Well, yeah, give it to me now. Come <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Again, I want to also thank everybody for all the Christmas, uh, say Christmas, the birthday greetings, birthday prayers, the gifts and everything, and the surprise you did yesterday. Aside the fact that it was a beautiful cake, the cake was sweet. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Don't ask me if I still eat cake. Why not? <laughs> So it was good. I wanted to appreciate God for that. I want to also thank everyone that supported towards uh, our mission to Uganda. When I woke up this morning, I can just only be grateful to God, um, irrespective. We go to God. This is the first time. This is the first time that we will see as a ministry that we are sponsoring seven people on a mission. This is just by the Lord's mercy and grace, and we, and He has talk, spoken to us again and again. That's going to be a good time. So give or keep us in prayers. Everybody for physical energy in Jesus' mighty name. <laughs> Praise God. It's my duty to preach the word of the Lord to you because this is my first responsibility. I love the church I pastor. I, I love it, shall I say. And I know definitely we are going places in Jesus' name. Generation Builders 2.0 is where we're going. Generation Builder 3.0 is on the 18th to 20th of July, by the grace of God. And we are heading to Nasarawa State University in Kefi, Nigeria, for a three days conference. And Generation Builders 4.0 <laughs> is going to be hosted by His Influence Church Medway. By the grace of God. It's going to be November 1st to 12th. November 1st to 12. Better book your leave because book your, those three days we will maximize it. We're expecting Bob, um, Bishop Bob and Teju Alonge. That's one of our fathers in faith. Um, you will enjoy their ministry. And uh, Darren Khan is coming from Canada too. He's confirmed again and again. We bring Baba, Baba <laughs> Beams to come here for the worship. And uh, I definitely want to be one of the guys that served us together. One of the grace that God has given to us in ministry is that when it comes to people serving, they serve willingly. This guy called 
AY now higher. He might not want me to call his name publicly. That play keyboard and help with this. When it came, most people, when it comes to instrumentality, they want to call them on. They are more sensitive with finance. I'm not against paying instrumentality. This is not a debate. That's not what I'm doing. You know, <laughs> but since he came in, he's been helping us. He's been very diligent and trying his best. So we don't understand. So, and I know it's grace because the last church we passed or two, the guy too served us there for about six years before we left. And he was playing, playing free and paying tight and supporting and all of that. So it just came to my heart that, okay, even though we've been, we've not been in touch, if we do generation builder, let's invite him too to just come and be part of what God is doing there. His name is Asin. I said, he might not even know that uh, we're inviting. We've not, we've not even set any plan in motion. Praise God. Publicity or evangelism, what date are we going on? 20, is it this next week? Oh, we're going to miss it. <laughs> yeah, please, we must understand that inviting people to church is compulsory. It's compulsory. Listen, Christianity can make a man to be an amway by. If you are receiving, you're not going. If you say, our oh, pastor preach, ah, the word of God is powerful. If you don't share with somebody else, you will just get to a level, you get more confused. We don't want to build people like that. Mm -hmm. Like Uganda, now all the anointing of Paul's life, right? he has to use it. <laughs> he has to use it. If any demons do like that, I say, Paul, I see. <laughs> I'm joking. Ah, why are you afraid? I'm joking. We can't have you over to your job. I will bring you back. <laughs> That's just a joke, anyway. But, but, but you have to share. Share the flowers, share. We don't need to be pleading. Can you, if you believe in a ministry, a ministry is building a blessing, the least you can do is to invite somebody. You have a neighbor, you have somebody around your side, you know, and invite them, and God will bless you in Jesus' name. Father, we trust you for expression as we share your word today. Give us capacity to release, to receive, and to be able to release in the days to come. Lord, increase our revelation of your authority in us let everyone under the sound of my voice irrespective of their irrespective of their age leave this place with audacity of faith Amen. that not only is christ real but it's real in our lives Amen. give us the ability to maximize divine resources that might be able to showcase your glory among men in the name of jesus that in our days and in our lives, the blood of Jesus will not be wasted. The name of Jesus will not be misused. And the authority of the Holy Ghost will not be abused. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. We give you praise and honor. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you. We've been on this series. This will be the third one, right? This is the third. The first one was we're dealing with... Um, Sin has committed sin. That's all I can remember about that. <laughs> then after that, we deal with another subject, which was what? Check your notes now. Corrected. That was last Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you definitely, I leave you with Pastor Lady next week, Sunday. Please give her the best of support. Don't forget she's my wife. <laughs> and when we come back, I will take one more session on this and definitely we move to some other things. I want us to move to subject matter like knowing God subject matter like leadership. I want to teach leadership on a Sunday morning. <laughs> Transformation leadership, strategic leadership, 360 degree leadership. Then from there we move to leadership in the church. Then we navigate from there to some emotional stuff as we move into summer. Okay, <laughs> Praise God. So today I want to talk to you about the authority of a believer or what we're supposed to call authority of Christ through believers. Authority of Christ through believers. And I'm really hoping that your faith will be boosted. While I discuss this, I will trust the Lord to give you who ability to practicalize this. And I will, because of probably where we came from now, I will tilt it a little bit into spiritual warfare, all right? <laughs> and tell you that you will overcome. In the name of Jesus Christ. I say you will overcome in the name of Jesus. Let's start with this scripture. First John chapter 5, verse 4 through to 8. First John chapter 5. There's someone that is saying my voice. The Holy Spirit just reminded me now. He said your weapon is unity. 
is a, is a, is a weapon everybody should use. But this person specifically, anytime you see disunity around you, people trying to fight or scatter things, be sure that the devil is attacking you. And this person, you need to be very sensitive to that because that is one of the entry points of the enemy against your life. And I pray that that door of the enemy will be blocked and you'll be able to enjoy the blessings of God in Jesus' name. First John, Holy Spirit, help me today. Give me energy and utterance in Jesus' name. First John chapter 5, verse 4 through to 8. Bible says, For whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Verse 5, for who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Verse 6, this is he that comes by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is this spirit that bear a witness, because the spirit it's true. That's the But verse 7 is my emphasis. Say, for there are three that bear record or witness in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are what? Come on. And these three are what? Are one. Verse 8. And there are three that bear witness on earth or in earth. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. Let's look up. There is what we call <laughs> the sovereignty of God. Anybody can question. But if you have imagination, you can know that if you can start something and finish it, then you know there is somebody that can start you and finish you. <laughs> Let me say it again. That if you can start as a human being something and finish it, then you should know that there is somebody that can start you and finish you. That person does not live in time, but he controls time. Are you with me? His name is Jehovah. He does not have meat. He does not talk twice. When he says yes, he doesn't need to repeat it. Because when he says yes, that yes is called in eternity. You need to understand the word of God. That is not our meat. The reason we disrespect or minimize or reduce the potency and the power of God is because he decided to introduce himself, not just as God, but as Father. The father dimension of God is what brings us a sense of familiarity because the intention of fatherhood is access. That I have it all, but if you, I do not give you access to coming, you will not be able to share. In which, but the challenge is that when we now become familiar to the fatherhood of God, then like prodigal son, we can say, give me what belongs to me and go, not knowing that the presence of the father is more important than his power and his resources. Are you tracking with me? So according to this scripture we just read now, he said there are three that bear witness in heaven. In other words, there's what we call authority center in the realm of the spirit. That authority center, there are three people that are named there. Our kings are not included. So there are three that are named there. He said one is the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And now you don't even need to, I don't need to make this a doctrine because if you stay with me, I'm going somewhere. If you go to Genesis chapter 1, you will see that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The Father said, let us make man who are the horse, the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. So these are, these are authority centers in the realm of the Spirit. But on earth, it said there are also some other authority too. So here now, we have <clears throat> the tree that bear with us said, We have this spirit, we have the water, and we have the blood. Before I go into that, let me even give you. Did I even give you the topic of the message? Authority of a believer. Yeah, but those that are writing down, just I want to call it tested weapons. You know why? Because I want to prove to you that this message is free. Tested what? Weapons. Yeah, tested weapons. Hallelujah. There are three words I want you to note as a believer. Number one is the word authority. Number two is the word power. Number three is the word responsibility. I want to know those three words. Number one is what? Number two and number three. Yeah. These three words are, 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 are important when we're discussing a subject matter like this. The question you ask is that what's authority? 
And I know some of you will expect Greek and Hebrew. <laughs> I can give you. That's a big deal. But I want to give you a definition that you cannot forget in 15, 20 years. Anywhere you see the word authority is the right to do something. Any authority is synonymous to right. Authority is the right to do something or the right to perform. The right is the right. Anywhere you see power, power is synonymous to ability. So authority is the right to do something. Power is the ability to do something. That suggests that you can have a right that you don't have the power to. As long as a child is an heir, he differs enough from his servant. Not because he's not entitled to the estate of his father, but he does not have the ability until he grows up. Are you with me? So authority is what? The right to do something. And power is what? Ability to do something. Then responsibility is the duty or the obligation to do something. To do so. Responsibility is not important because if you have authority, you have power, and you don't have responsibility, <laughs> you, you are just an explosion on two legs. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not dealing with responsibility today. Let's deal with authorities and power. And I want to understand how this works, especially as believers. The youngest person here should be Kemi Sola, right? If Kemi Sola is to stand beside me on the battle ring, who will win? <laughs> Come on now. I say if Kemi Sola, even if I'm sick, don't <laughs> forbid. If Kemi, do you know Kemi Sola? That's the, that's, that's the fine girl at the back there, you know? <laughs> After her mom, you know? <sighs> Did I mention that? <laughs> She's happy. <laughs> Lord, this is a Gen Z. <laughs> if you bring Kemi Sola beside me, and say it's time for five, the question, who will win? I say, who will win? If you say, I am the one, you, you are right, but you are not complete. It depends on what she has. Imagine Kemi Sola beside me and he's wearing police uniform. Who will win? No, who will win now? Huh? That's when you will discover the authority and power they have their different. So if she's wearing a police uniform, she has the right, but have the power. She has the authority, have the power. The question is on battle ring, which one is more important? The one that has police, or the police that is saying see that is a hello, sir, good evening, sir. Even when it's not good to you, do, do you think you don't have a blow to give to him? Are you with me? Because right is powerful. You cannot enjoy power if you don't understand the importance of right. Something happened recently. I had a revelation about a phase in ministry that I need to open. For now, I'm using it for publishing of books. So this year, I know it's a little bit busy. We're just trusting God, can I publish more books? So I'm trying to build a team far back in Nigeria. So we register a company in Nigeria called Kings to Kings. Kings to Kings, I got it from the Bible. And I thought I saw revelation. That's powerful because you see something. Ah, it's a king to king. Say, ah, when anybody here that says, oh, man of God, you come again. No, you two will feel. So I wanted to register it in UK. So I registered the complaint. I wanted to register it in UK. I put it immediately. I put the king there. They said, this is suspicious. So we need to investigate it. Let me tell you, they rejected the, they rejected the door. You know why? Because there are no two kings. Oh, you, you, you understand? There are no two kings. Even if it is KG or KGZ, if he pronounce kings, it's only one person that has the right. And they rejected, and they, I can't have no right to appeal. What, what, what are you appealing? So I'm, I've been begging God now to give me another name. To let you know that when somebody is giving a right, it's an exclusive option that cannot be shared. When Jesus is called having a name that is higher than any other name, he didn't say Hired some name can come up when you mention that name Jesus, every other name is silenced. Are you with me? So, authority is right, authority is right. And when you become born again, you have the right, you have the right. Let me give you scriptures. In fact, Pastor Lide share one of them. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Look at this. <laughs> Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Please. Wow, I'm enjoying this sound. Though. It's so nice. Praise God. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Bible says, Behold, I what? Come on now. Behold, I what? I want you to mark that word give. It looks like gifts. Right? One thing you must understand about 
authority is the authority is conferred. You don't you don't labor for it. It's a gift. This time that this scripture was written, Jesus has not gone to the cross. And he called the guys together and said, I give you authority. Hey, that same chapter is I see Satan fall like lightning. Come on, say, I have authority. You are not bold enough. You are not convinced enough. You don't need to lay hands on somebody and the person falls down. Ah, I have it. Mm -mm. When you have authority, it's mostly shown when you speak. Huh? When you speak, your persuasion in the words of kings. It shows, and I'm still going to get there. Don't let me drop the gun. But I want to first of all convince you, whether you have a post as a title or you just became born again today, you have what? Authority. Jesus said, I give you. I give you. I give you. In other words, it's a delegated empowerment. I have it, and I decide who I give it to. And anyone that is born again, if these guys were not born again when Jesus gave them authority. Are you with me? It was when they became born again that they received power. You will receive power after the Holy Ghost has come. But you don't receive authority after the Holy Ghost. You receive authority when you believe in Christ. Come on, say, I have authority. And this authority has a specific job. It's that I'm giving you, versions can use the word um, power or any other version, you know, King James or where they started. This word authority is from the word exousia. That's the original Greek word, exousia, which means authority. Are you with me? Don't mind the version. But this, okay. Why did you say, which version was whatever, just leave it. I just want to just convince so that you don't miss it together. It's that I'm giving you what? Authority. Authority has a job. The job of authority is that you can trample on what? Snakes and scorpions. Do you know the difference between snakes and scorpions? Both of them are spiritual attacks. I hope you know. Come on now. I hope you know. But snakes and scorpions, scorpions are short-term attack. Snakes are long-term attack. <laughs> when a scorpion bites, you feel the pain. Then it goes down. When the snake bites, you don't feel the pain. Then the so they are shorter. <laughs> they are shorter. And everybody today, some you, are, you face challenges like they can come after two days, is gone. But the person that is facing some challenges like diabetes or whatever is a long term. But Jesus is saying, whether it comes as a snake or as a scorpion, I am giving you what? Authority. In other words, this is a gift. This is what a gift. You believe in you believe in Christ. You believe you have it. Then you can engage it. I've given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and over what all. Come on, say all. These are simple scriptures, but I will force it on our heart because we need to believe this. When I begin to share one or two experiences of my life with you, you will discover that if you don't know this scripture as a believer, you're going nowhere. You have to assimilate this. This is one scripture you must put in your mouth when you wake up in the morning. He said he has given me authority to trample us things as scorpion, and not over most of the powers of the enemy, but all the powers. In other words, this power is dunamis. This power is dunamis. It's the same with Acts chapter 1, verse 8. It's dunamis. God gave us by the Holy Ghost. The devil too has his own. But Jesus said, when authority and power stands, the authority and give you can stop ability. You don't understand what I'm saying. In other words, if I'm the king of United Kingdom, if I'm the king here, the fact that you are richer than me in this land does not mean I can't lead you. You don't understand, you understand what I'm saying. You understand what I'm saying? That I'm the pastor, I have the authority over members, that the fact that you are more intelligent than me does not mean I don't have the right to pastor you. So Jesus said, when I give you authority, even when power faces you, my right is superior to their ability. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So it could be your fault, it could be your challenge, it could be your age, and the devil is using that as an entrance against you. But Jesus said, when I give you authority, even when the enemy comes with power, your authority is superior to it. So, oh, come on, you need to be excited about this is our weapon. So if Kemsola is here now, I'm here, and I say, Kemsola, I will blow you better. If, if you, I just wear the police uniform. I say, hey. Ticket to ticket, ticket, ticket. Because no matter, even if I decide to just say, let me deal with you, I know what I will meet at home. By the time I open the envelope like this, say 170 pounds. 
<laughs> and the more, and it, she can be smiling. She can say, I can't touch you. That's why you, the fact that you are bigger than the police does not mean, or you get to a court, and the guy that is sitting there look like your sister, or your younger sister said, this small, small girl, they just went to study law. So what are they doing there? And I said, sit down, how can I help you? He said, you did it, they did it, said, six months. Six months, just like that, excuse me, you, you don't respect that. No, 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 no. She has authority. It's authority. You have to be intentional about the authority you have in Christ. Are you tracking with me? You have to be what? Intentional about the authority you have in Christ. So authority now is the right, but power is the ability. Authority is a gift. But power is something you grow. So in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 now, most of us should know that scripture. The Bible says you will receive power. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. You receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And shall be a witness unto me in Jerusalem, which is your life and your family, in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost ends of the earth. So you need power to perform. You need power to manifest Authority on the outside. The inside is authority, which is your right. The outside is power. Are you with me? Outside is what? Power. You have the right as a father to say, I am the one that gave back to this region, but you need power to be able to raise them. You need power to feed them. You need the ability to put food on the table. You need power to be able to grow them according to the wisdom of God. So the question is that if they ask you, which one will you pick between power and authority? What will you do? I will pick the two. We 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 will pick the two. Praise God. One of the major challenges, not challenges, but it's an ob uh, what I observe, which is something common in the body of Christ, that when you hear power, <laughs> hey, <laughs> you want to follow that, because if I say there's power in this place, now you expect somebody to if you break camera, you pay for it. If I will break chairs, God, you will pay for it. You pay for it. <laughs> you know, um, yes, power can manifest into rising and falling. There's nothing wrong. And, uh, and if, if, if you have, if you are dealing with demonology, I would have explained to you why that does happen. Sometimes when the presence of God is strong and your body cannot contain it, you know, it can give you that kind of expression. Sometimes if, the, if, the, if, the, if you are contending with the will of God and God wants to insist on his will over you and the atmosphere is spiritually conducive for it, it can cause about right now. Sometimes when it is affliction of the devil or some levels of obsession, not possession, possession of the heaven and the presence of God is there, that kind of warfare between the two spiritual realms can make people to just fall down. You know? But the question I will say, ask is that if you fall down, please try to. And don't rise empty. Because it's possible for you never to fall down and you still be authentic in the will of God. In fact, in fact, let me tell you, by experience, and I'm not joking, because a meeting like this, now you want me to share experience. I have experience with the Holy Ghost, and I know what it means to fall down, not in the flesh, but in a counter. Then the realm of the Spirit, I know what it means for the Holy Spirit to carry you and swing you in the Spirit, and you'll fly like a wind. Like an, in the realm of the Spirit, when you come by, you will know something hits you. Lay every, I've said before, the same way we meet in the natural idea, we meet in the realm of the Spirit too. So these things are these things are real, but I don't want us to tag the manifestation of power to fall in them. I'm not saying it's wrong. That's why I explained that. But don't tag it to it. In fact, Bible says I think it's Ezekiel chapter two. He said, and, it's, and the Lord said unto me, say Ezekiel, rise up. I want to speak to you. See, Bible says, and the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. The Spirit did not enter into you and pull you on the floor. It sets me on my feet. Then the last time I shared, when the Holy Ghost came in Acts chapter two verse one. Bible said they were standing. And when the Holy Ghost came like fire, nobody fell down. Okay? So we need to be just be careful. Not to think falling down is equivalent to the power of God. In fact, the first responsibility of power or ability in our life is to crucify the flesh. And I say that again. The first, the evidence that you have power as a believer is the ability to control your appetite. Your decision to submit your body as a living sacrifice to God. That's the first thing. Then the second thing is to be able to give expression to the gift and the ability of God inside of you. You need to know that. So when you say somebody is powerful, it's not about turning down. It can happen in Uganda. I don't, there's nothing to do, I do whatever he wants to do. I'm not, I'm not against that. 
But the evidence of power is that that person will stand up and say, this person is powerful. It's his ability to crucify the flesh and be able to give expression to his gifts and ability. Are you with me? But those that are writing notes, before I forget, how does authority come? Let me just give you four of them. <clears throat> just note, how does authority come? If God is giving people gifts of authority, how does it come? Number one, authority comes when you're born again. That's very important. When you're born again, you receive authority. At least you sit at the right hand of God above principalities and power. Authority comes when you are called to serve. Authority is, in, is imposed on us when we are called to serve. We're called to serve. Media, can you wait till we finish service? When we are called to serve. Number three, authority is conferred on us when we become parents, whether natural or spiritual. When you're parents, you know, you are conferred with authority. Hallelujah. Yeah, well, I just want to make sure this thing works. <laughs> Thank you. I need a sound, really. When you're called to what? Number one is what? When you're born again. Number two is when you're called to what? To serve. So when you want to trust God and have authority, when you're called to serve. Number three is that when you become a parent, whether natural or spiritual. Spiritual parenting, which is like pastoring and the likes, is very important in the scope, scope, scope of things when it comes to authority. We, we, I'm not saying it because I am one. But for instance, if you're a member of this influence church now, as in a member of this influence church now, according to the ordinances of heaven, the devil does not have the right to penetrate you without my permission. It's an authority given in pastor. Praise God. Hallelujah. And number four, authority is given when you are, authority is conferred on you when you are given a man to. When you are given a man to. I won't have time to explain that because I want to deal with this subject matter. Are you still tracking with me? Now, if you now ask me, when we're talking about power, which is ability, one of the things you must appreciate about the power of God is that power of God resides in the Holy Ghost. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes. So there's something about this thing called power or this ability is connected with the Holy Ghost. And anytime you see somebody operating in power by the Holy Ghost, then definitely you can see the manifestation of the gift of the Spirit in their lives. For instance, now, when we walk in prophetic words and some other stuff, these are powers of the Holy Ghost. In fact, there's this scripture that I like, which I've been following for about 15 years now, which is Isaiah chapter 11. A seed will rise out of the seed of Jesse. You know, and upon him the spirit of love, we raise the spirit of the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding of revelation, the spirit of cancer and mind, the spirit of knowledge on the fear of the there are sevenfold manifestation of the spirit of God. Anyway, those things manifest, these are the powers of God in action. Are you tracking with me? The power of God in action. Praise God. Now, after saying all of this, are you okay? <laughs> After saying all of this, what I want to focus on today is one of the authority, not power center, one of the authority center, which is, according to that first John that we read, chapter 5, he called it, there are three that bear witness in heaven, he called it the Father, the Word, you know, and the Spirit. So that word, the name of Jesus, is what I want to focus on. It's what I want to focus on. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. This guy, you are distracting me, but it's not working yet. We made a noise just now. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because of the money we spent, the guy is determined to make it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's leave it after service. Praise God. Now, I want to talk to you about the name of Jesus as an authority in the realm of the spirit that every believer. Muslim, and we practicalize it. And I'm praying that God will open your spirit to understand this one. Whether you have, if I ask you that, oh, are you passing through any spiritual warfare? If you say no, it's because you are lying. Because there's nobody, there's no in spiritual warfare as I'm talking to you now. There's nobody. It's either you are winning or you are not sure or you don't even know you're in warfare. Everybody. But I can give you a prescription. <laughs> yeah. A prescription. It's called the name of Jesus. It works. So. This one works. My name is Zipwa Kwanishile. I'm the pastor of his influence church. I approve this. And I will prove it again and again. 
When I became born again, like I used to say, my head was big and empty. But I was privileged to know it. I know it. Until when I began to face spiritual attack. My spiritual attack journey began when my mom told me the story. That when she was trying to give back to me, that my head came out before they got to the hospital. So I began to have chest pain as far back as days of primary secondary school. When I got to secondary school, I was in a boarding school. Then I began to feel, see what they call having dreams, where you know that it, this one is the devil. You don't need to be born again to know that the devil is after your life. That's why I started having those terrible dreams. And as I'm standing before you, I have dreamt. Ah! There was a sister in my life that was eating in the dream every day for one year. I'm telling you so that you can know that it's not only you. You just ate one. You said they killed my destiny. Look, did they kill anything now? Even for now, now, they don't bring food. Just make sure it's a nice one. No Uganda dishes. <laughs> it's a nice one. I will eat it. Because the realm I'm operating now is not the realm where the devil can fake me with food. Are you with me? Nobody sell food in the, in the Bible except Jesus. So, so if you bring one, I will just bless it. Now we can start tra trample our snakes and scorpion now. Are you with me? So these times I started facing some terrible spiritual attack. I was in a boarding school. The hall, one of the hall, which is the dormitory, is a little bit bigger than this. So you will have bunks, double bunks here, double bunks here, if you have been to boarding school. You know? And it will be like, 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 that would be like probably 40 people in a room. You know, with wardrobes at the head. And I will be sleeping at night. And I will see this demon. Hmm? It's a demon. We pack all the mattresses. I, I start there together. Come and put it on me while I'm on my own bed. I start pressing. You see, I, I, that was, and I was having chest pain. Can you can imagine? I'm telling you, I couldn't survive that time. I have to go home, take no medication. That was when I started. So when I became born again, even though it was like forced that I became born again, it was failure that dropped into Christ, not love. You know, that, that I became born again. I knew that spiritual warfare was free. Not only was spiritual warfare real, witchcraft was so strong in my house, in my own lineage. You don't know what it means for someone to travel to America and they would just call him to return. And they would just return like that. Oh, you read story, you watch movie. We saw it. Yeah. You saw witchcraft. My dad was trying to help somebody. Let me tell you a story so that you can... Are you already... Are you afraid with my story already? You know, why should you be afraid now? My dad was thinking he was doing his younger brother a favor. Then took him, took her to get a job. And the coaster bus hit the car and crashed the bonnet and caught the leg into almost two. And the man was in coma, you know. What, that was where the devil didn't come to visit. Now he decided to come with the demons of poverty and sat in the house permanently. It was in the midst of that we became born again. Can you imagine you have a father that is trying to build a house? You know, say, so let's build a uh, boy's quarter so that we can start building the main one while you move into boy's quarter. And for 15 years, you did not continue. As if the date was not continued. That's the kind of attack. As at the age of eight, I saw my mom wearing scarf. I'm going to look for my dad in the hospital, check on him, receiving bad news and managing it. And she trying to manage, bless God for strong women, manage the emotions. That was when I did, that, that, that was the family. I grew into warfare. Warfare. So when I became born again, I knew that at least the first thing I should do is that God show mercy, not on me, on my dad and my mom. Hallelujah. That the Lord show mercy on my father and my mother. You know? So, so and, and that was the prayer. I said all of that to share with you one dream in our heart. And here comes the day now born again, now born again, and, 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 and I was sleeping, and I saw a dream. In that dream, and I want to listen to this because it took time by the scripture to understand some of the things in me. In that dream, I saw myself walking, and the car parked behind me, and there are four guys inside it. As I wanted to move forward, I knew the spiritual atmosphere was wrong, so I wanted to run, and I heard a voice saying to me, don't back them, face them. And as I faced them, these four guys opened gun and fired me in the dream. Life, bam! And I shouted the name of Jesus. And right there in the dream, the bullet came down. And I woke up. When I woke up, oh man, I was feeling myself. <laughs> as in, I was saying, wow, come on. I was just feeling myself. But the first thing that done on me, that so the name of Jesus can stop a bullet. 
And indeed, it stopped. Thank God I shared with my friend, all my friends there, his name is also Deepo. Uh, and, he said, and he said to me, he said, bro, the truth, what you did, that battle is an authority in the spirit you want. But for you to manifest the authority in the spirit, you need power. You must understand. Are you with me? You need power to claim right. So, you shouted Jesus in dream, and the bullet came down. Now that you are awake, you need to engage in spiritual exercise by the Holy Ghost to confirm what you saw in the spirit. And thank God, I fasted and prayed. Just probably all two or three days. Because the day that demon that came in that dream came to reality, it was inside the Zamo. It was inside the Zamo. And that's another dimension. That was when I knew the Holy Ghost has anger. Holy Ghost has laughter. There are manifestations that when the Holy Spirit is there. Have you, have you ever... <laughs> Have you ever been to a place and somebody just says something to you, says you, you, you will not make it, and you just look at them, all of a sudden you start laughing. <laughs> and the guy says, why are you laughing? I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, you did so. I just laugh. Because the Holy Ghost is saying, come on, to be, uh, mm, they know bond. Oh, give me English. Give me English. Give me English. They know, feel, oh, give me English. Give me English. <laughs> wait them. Wait, wait them. Wait, wait them. Wait them. Wait them there. Wait them there. Wait them there. That was when I knew that the name of Jesus works. And beyond that, I've had some other experiences. I've been in gunshot. I've been in a bus before that I saw my sorted three times. I shouted Jesus and threw me through the window and there was no scratch. I've been there. I've been, I've been there. I've been there. I've been in a position before that they put a gun on my head. And by the time I said, why are you putting a gun? I look back and that gun on my head. And they couldn't shoot it. I've seen it. But the one that happens last... Happens in Medway. Medway here. Medway. Pastor a church. Am I boring you with my story? Yeah. Pastor a church for six years. But I was in the ministry for seven years. This 2019. When I joined the ministry, I wanted to give 100% of my attention. But they begin to rock my boat. And the normal thing you would have done when you are serving a ministry and they are not allowing you to give expression to what's in you or probably they just don't trust you. I don't blame them. It's one of the things that happens in the body of Christ. You want to leave. So I wanted to leave and God gave me a specific instruction. You will not leave until I tell you. And I was there for six years. From here to London, we're driving four years from midway to London to pastor that church until God says, you can go. It was in the midst of that that I didn't know that the demon of depression came following me. The last time I gave expression to the call of God upon my life was 10 years ago that I did the first generation builders in London. And that was the best meeting I've ever done in London. Direct candidate is coming in November. That was the first time I, invited, I was the first person that brought him to London. And I thought it's time to do, but it just caged me. And when I knew that was it, the only thing I can do is to humble myself. Because it is not wisdom for you to be in another ministry and be showing forth your vision. Are you with me? So I caged it. But I thank God because the vision is not dead. Because after 10 years, I can say shall generation builders. And it's still the same body in my day. Are you with me? So in the midst of that, I didn't know the spirit of depression was trailing me. And it's looking for one thing that you will not preach again. That in this UK, your voice will not be heard. In this UK, you will not hold mine. That was what we were looking for. I did not know. Because where we came from, we didn't know that depression does not come by... Where, where we came from, when somebody is depressed, he removes his wig, does the boy hear. <laughs> it's a different expression. And I wouldn't believe that somebody of my person, that being a spiritual person, but I just noticed that when I preach in the morning, I'm not excited in the evening. Listen to me, yo. Am I boring you? Please don't let me bore you. Because you are passing through your stuffs now. You don't know. You're looking at this guy's time before. You are shaking me up and you say, he's a fine boy. Listen to me. You are passing through a phase that we aspire. You need to know how it does. And don't be jealous of another man that is in the reaping season when you are in your sowing season. Re please listen. Everything was against me. There was no money. There was no passport. There was no job. I have two hands and two legs that can walk. And for four years in this land, I could not walk because my visa did not work. Are you with me? It was in the midst of that 
And sometimes you can be under prayer to say, ah, ah, look at me. If I'm in Nigeria by now, I should have been a big, you know, big man of God. It's that when you see people that you have even trained, that have gone ahead of you, then what, what, what have I done? Have I said? Then you begin to confess a sin that you did not commit. And I didn't know the spirit of depression was coming in. So most time when I preach in the morning, people can come and say I'm blessed. But in the evening, that's why I get my report card from the Holy Ghost. The evidence I preach where is more message. Because by evening, I will still be feeling the anointing. I'm just telling you my spirit. I'll be feeling the excitement. It's just like a feedback. The Holy Spirit happy about what I was doing. But this is every evening. I'm depressed. I'm discouraged. I'm discouraged. It's a struggle to travel to London. I know what it means to buy five pounds for it into a car. <laughs> and you, it will take you to London. I can tell you where this car will stop and where we finish. Yeah. I know what it means to be led by the Holy Ghost who enter into a shop and you know that that's the time they are telling bread for 10p. Yes, I know. So, what are you passing through? Oh, yeah. I know what it means. Do you understand? To know where to buy the best clothes, but it's not in Mark and Spencer. There are places you buy Mark and Spencer, there's no Mark and Spencer. Oh, I, I know, I know, I know, I know. And I know we don't want to say this publicly. Don't want to say, but that, that was the experience. But I was really depressed. Really depressed. And to make it worse, nobody was helping me. Nobody was helping me. There's nobody that said, the Lord has spoken to me. That I should just encourage you. Ah, nobody. And the devil told me. He said, there's a scripture for you. <laughs> there's a scripture for you. <laughs> you know the scripture he gave me? <laughs> See, I, 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 I prodigal God saw left his father. And he sold everything. I lost everything. And nobody gave to him. That's what he told me. He said, me. when I had God to leave UK, to leave he told me in the place of service, I will take you out of the shore of Africa. And I will make you a great man. Now I will take you to nation. I know the number of countries the Lord wants to send me to. Everything has opened now. That's why we can tell this story. What? What is this? As I drove that car, like this, it was raining on Sunday evening. I did not know that my hands were on steering, but my mind was not there. And that's how I lost control of the steering. And the car levitates. I entered into the dish. Boom! Before I could came to life, it was already off. And I shouted Jesus. As I'm talking to you now, I remember when I shouted Jesus and I knew the response. As I shouted Jesus, the car came down. And it was almost entering into the dish, but there was a tiny tree, like this pipe, that held the car in front. So I came out. I called my wife. <laughs> so see, this, the first thing I said is that this is how people die. Yeah, that, remember that? That's just how people that, that came out. I reversed the car. We didn't call the pool car. They came in, they dragged it out. We started the battery. Psh, I see drop like my heart was not there. It was when I got home after a few days that I discovered that this was spiritual attack. And I had to look for a way to deal with this. One of the ways to deal with it, I told you, was that I went to look for a place to begin to pray. I prayed five hours every day for five days. On the fifth day, God said, go and celebrate your birthday. And that was where pff, everything shifted. And that bad day, when we got there without money, somebody made sure everybody, 40 people are 40. Everybody has finished it. Then somebody went and paid for everybody. <laughs> I was not looking, who paid, who paid? They don't have stuff like that. I said that to you, to tell you know that there is power in the name of Jesus. I said there is what? Power. In the name of I shouted at Jesus. And that car just went. I can remember how it went down like this. Boom. When I went back to that environment, I should even go there one of these days just to tango. When I went back, I drove one mile and I discovered that that small tree that stopped the car is the only tree on that road. Yeah, I'm not sure that one. But what helped me is the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is not just an atmosphere, it's a power and authority center. That every believer must possess. What can I give me my note? Hallelujah. For instance, in, Genesis, in Acts chapter 3, verse 16. Excuse me. Acts chapter 3, verse 16. Say, by faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see is now being made strong. So the name of Jesus is an authority center. We're talking about the authority of a believer. I need you to mark this one. And I want to explain to you how it works. Hallelujah. Give me my notes, son. Give me my note. I want to tell you something about name that is contrary to our own ideology about what we call name. What we call name. 
Remember Acts chapter, uh, as I said, Philippians chapter 2, say he put himself, he did not form himself to be equally with God. Uh, he took himself, the, you know, the, 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 the what? The clothes of a servant, and um, even on, uh, servant even on the cross, death on the cross. Say, because of that, God has given a name that is above every other name, that the mention of the name of Jesus, every what? Name shall bow, he never and now not, and every tongue shall confess that what Jesus Christ is Lord, to what? To the glory of the Father. That name that he has been given is a name that has no equation. No, there, there is no competition with that name. And one of the things I want to help you out to know as a believer, are you still with me? Is that it is possible to call the name of Jesus and nothing happens. That's what I want to address. Because something is supposed to happen. Because we have the authority. Are you with me? So what is the power of the name? The name is the manifestation or the revelation of someone's character. Distinguishing them from others. So when I tell you that I'm introduced to you, Runke, the first thing in your mind when I tell you meet Runke, or let me say meet my friend Runke, for instance, the first thing that comes to your mind is that any Runke you have met is the first definition or character you will tag with her name. Yes, Are you with me? Yes, Are you with me? Because in your mind, if I tell you bring this share for me, you won't be telling me what do I want to use share for. You know there is a character attached to a share. He's for sitting down. Human being can become called Abraham and they are robbers because the way the word is made, the name and the character differs. But in the realm of the spirit, when a name is tagged, it's tagged with his character. And you cannot separate the two. Are you with me? So it is possible for you to know the name of Jesus. If you don't know his character, it will not work. Are you with me? So you need to understand that the N O oh, Jesus Christ. I'm about to enter some terrain. Just stay with me. So we're doing. So, so the name of a person and their character are not separate. They are not what they are not separate. So when you mention a name, his purpose, his usefulness, and his character should flood the scene. You flood the scene. You flood the scene. So if I tell you that, oh, oh, he, he is an husband. You should be able to, according to the definition of what you think an husband will, you should be able to flood your mind that this is what we expect from the person. Is it possible for kinshas to sneak in into Medway? Why? Because the nature of kinship, they don't sneak in. Except they are, you know, looking for a second wife. <laughs> so the name and the character does not have separation. Stay with me. Give me the next slide. Because the name of Jesus will begin to work for us. So mentioning his name without understanding his character is what weakens our results. It's not weakening our results. And I'm telling you, I've seen many people that call that name. Even before, to have called it, it doesn't make any sense. But we live in a consciousness now. Then we shout Jesus, we know what it means. Are you, are you still with me? Give me the next slide. Thus, praying in the name of Christ means to pray as directed, as authorized by him, bringing revelation that flows out of his presence. Praying in Jesus' name, therefore, it's not a religious formula to just end our prayers. So I say, in Jesus' name, we pray, say, amen. No, that's the religion. Jesus did not even teach us to pray like that. And I'm not saying it's bad. But that's not the essence of that name. Please, as believers, don't be familiar with that name. That name, oh, Shakabondo Vekipa Lagada Bosopala. Hey, Kando <laughs> Shabala. That name is not your meat. Yes, that, may, that name has the highest authority that heaven can recognize. The Bible, let me give me a scripture. Give me a scripture. Revelation chapter 19, verse 12. Revelation chapter 19, verse 12. Revelation chapter 19, verse 12. Come on, give me that scripture. Revelation chapter 19, verse 12. I want to show you how they recognize the name in the realm of the spirit. The Bible says his eyes, that's Jesus, were like a fiery flame. And his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knows. Except what? Except himself. Go to the next verse. Go to the next verse. He wore a robe stained with blood, and his name is called what? The Word of God. In other words, when you call Jesus, what they hear over there is different. Because everybody can bear Jesus. 
But there is only one Jesus that is the king of glory. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Oh, oh, have you read before that the name of the Lord is a strong tower? Yes, sir. And the righteous run into it and they are what? Yes, Come and say there is safety in that name. Yes, Come and shout and say there is safety in that name. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 45, David was fighting Goliath and he understood that. He said, you come against me with sword and spear and with javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty. He knows the name, the God of armies, whom you betray. So I come. So the name of God is a weapon that kills giants. It's a weapon that kills giants. Please listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. What I'm about to share with you now, if you get this, this is the core of the discussion. In Genesis chapter 1, God made the heavens and the earth. He later said, let us make man in our own image. The power of Christ is beyond plant kingdom and animal kingdom. The power authority of Christ is within human kingdom. In John chapter 1, in the beginning was the word. It was not recognized there as Jesus. It was recognized as the word. The word is his identity. It was Jesus that we target when he was on it. Are you with me? It was the word there. It was Jesus there. When he returned, they see he has not changed his identity as the word. Not a word. In the beginning was the word. The word was God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning. Through him, all things were. In other words, is a name that name everything. And is a name that name everything. So that everything name can bow to the one that names it. Two immortal things were made, and there was nothing that was made that was not made by him. In him was life, the life is the light of man, and the light shines in darkness, and darkness could not comprehend it. Then he began to tell us that he, he said, then he became flesh and dream among men, and we behold his glory. This is what I want to say to you, and I want to please listen to this. When you call the name of Jesus, what they hear in the realm of the spirit is different. Are you with me? Hmm. Lord, show us mercy. Lord, show us mercy. Ah, I love Jesus. Ah, he's a good God. Jesus sitting at the right hand of the Father, sitting down. The only thing that can make him to stand, do you know why? What can we do? Since the day he ascended and sat at the right hand of God, the only time he stood is when somebody recognized him as the word. Not as Jesus. Stephen quoted, spoke in a chapter and summarized the entire Bible. And Jesus stood up. And he even said, look into the realm of the Spirit. I saw the Son of Man standing. Standing. Because what Jesus responds to in the realm of the Spirit is not the quote of the name, but the revelation behind the name. Are you listening to me? So now, this is how it works. When I'm sitting down here and there is a challenge, and I shout in the name of Jesus Christ. What I am saying in the realm of the spirit is that I am issuing a command and I expect every authority in heaven to respond. So when you say in the name of Jesus Christ, all the angels in heaven is waiting for the next command. Hey. Then you said nothing or you are joking. And God said, I will punish you because you must not call my name in vain. Are you with me? Because when you call that name, you are asking all the angels to wait for an attention. Because what you say next must be responded to. That's why the name cannot be challenged your mind and expect it not to generate results. That's why the name is not something. So when I add that and I say, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, it, it is what came out of my mouth is that name. But what flew from my spirit to the spirit realm? is that I need a first man from the realm of the spirit. Are you tracking with me? So when I, Bible says his name shall be called the word of God. That's why one of the things I will advise you, when, when, when we don't, one of the things I will tell you is that you, the name of Jesus will never work if you have no revelation. And I want you to practically learn it. Because you don't need 10 scriptures to engage authority in the spirit. You just need one. Just need one. Just need one. You know, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. You know that every knee will bow when you call that name as a believer. Then you face a challenge. You don't have time to make 10 statements. But when you say Jesus, 
Angels in heaven, the one responsible for caregiver, the one responsible for faith, the one responsible for security, all of them are waiting for your next statement because you called her name. Ha! Ah, I was driving. And I didn't know it's a, uh, 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 it's, it's a countryside. And it was snowing. The road was clear. All of a sudden, the wind blew. And blew all the snow on the, on, 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 on what they call it, in the bush. And blew it on the road. And collected the steering from my, from my hand. And before I knew, boom, I was in the midst of snow. Accelerate, reverse, nothing. When I step out, <laughs> when, when I step out, what they call the snow on the floor was almost my ankle in the middle of the night. What is this? 8 p.m. Everywhere is that. All I just said is that Jesus Christ. I didn't know what I said, but when I said Jesus Christ, I didn't know there was an ordinance in the realm of the spirit responding to what I said. All of a sudden, I look and I saw a car coming towards me. When they got before me, four guys opened the door. They opened the boot, they picked over. I didn't know them. And they scrap everything. I say reverse. As I reverse and I escaped, that was how I discovered that these are. <laughs> I couldn't say thank you to them. And I, I didn't speak in tongue. Because the name of Jesus is our default setting when something goes wrong. Yeah. <laughs> and you have to learn to practice it. Because now, when challenges come, they say, What will you say? Someone say, Mommy, oh, someone say, Hey, someone say, I check, someone say, My father, someone say, My mother, someone say, My mother. But some of us, because we are used to it, we know where our confidence is. When anything happens, our default setting is what? Jesus. Come on, shout Jesus. Jesus. And when we say it, we see results. Hallelujah. We say, We see results. Some of you, you have too many words we are using, but just one word is enough. At the mention of the name, of, not at the mention of a prayer point. At the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee, every knee, every knee. I do not doubt the word of the Lord. I do not doubt the word of the Lord. Sometimes you just have to go into your house. I say, this year is a better year. My husband will behave well. My wife is going to be righteous. My children are going to comply with the counsel of the spirit. But Lord, I don't know the prayer point, but I know a name. It's Jesus. I walk into every room. I say in the name of Jesus. Angels know what I was saying. I go to another. I say in the name of Jesus. Angel knows what I'm doing, what I'm saying. You have to practicalize that name because it makes a difference. Hallelujah. This is one of the key authority of believers. It's one of the key authorities of believers. Glory to God. Glory to God. That's why believers who cannot afford to play game with this name. You can't be familiar with it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So as I begin to walk with God, one of the things I notice now is that <laughs> the more revelation of Christ I have, the more of the word of God I listen to, the more logos, written word or revealed word that is in my spirit, the more confidence I have in that name. Because that name has its character in it. Has its character in it. Believers, <laughs> I plead with you, I say, don't underestimate the power of the word of God. You might say you come to church, pastor is preaching for one hour. It doesn't make much meaning to me. I don't understand it. Hey, 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 you will need it. You will need nobody that is a student that will not write an exam. You will need it. You will need it. And when you need it, may the spirit of remembrance be available. That when you call that name, it will work. And it's going to work in the name of Jesus. I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, that one of the greatest authorities, of the name of Jesus is the name of Jesus. Let me advise you, what's a legal right to interact with the realm of the spirit? So take your word seriously. If you, if you respect the word, the name of Jesus, we know that names are powerful. And you also know that when you speak, you have to take it serious. And when you speak as believers, expect what? Expect a reaction. Don't talk too much. In your place of work, don't talk too much. Don't talk too much. You know, the, more, the more you talk, the more they underestimate what you're saying. You joke, everything is a joke. Everything is a joke. Everything is a joke. You just jest, just laugh over everything. The more you might have said. Even when you are greeting people, you greet with integrity that they will know is a privilege you are greeting. You know, everything is not joking, joking. Expect your word. When you, when you say somebody, I don't like this, you don't say it two times. 
when God speaks, do you think that God calls a national heavenly assembly every day as they come today? Oh, no, this is what we are going to do. Do you think God say, okay, let's gather? Angels, you must not disobey me today. And tomorrow you must know. When the day he spoke, let there be, he doesn't need to say it again. That's how powerful and potent the word of the Lord is. Are you tracking with me? So when you speak, expect. Then learn to acknowledge that name. This is important because it builds a culture. One of the things I've learned with, you know, for some years that helps me to cultivate the presence of God is that I, I honor and acknowledge that name. So like three or four times a day, you can, I can be in the same job. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It builds a culture. It builds an atmosphere. You know? And when you're saying thank you, Jesus, angels are bearing witness to that and say, hey, Father, your son is greeting you. So, and they are getting familiar to you and your voice. So that the day you have challenges to us, they will say, we know that voice. It doesn't play game. You know? Not that it's the day you need to have need. That's the only day you know that name. Hallelujah. So learn to acknowledge that. Repeat, thank you, Jesus, a few times daily. is a way to cultivate the presence of God. Then read and listen to the word of God. Say it again, be acquainted with the truth. <laughs> be acquainted with the truth. The world we live today is what we need to. I want us to practicalize this. Go to the next truth. This thing for me. And let's rest our feet. Let's rest our feet. Are you blessed today? No matter how old you are in faith, you should have a scripture right now that at least you like. Whether the Lord is my shepherd, just, just, just have one. You don't need to have a scripture at least. Look at this, my scripture now. No, give it to me. Give it to me. Because every scripture covers a need. Every scripture covers every scripture. What? Co come on, say after me. Every scripture covers a need. So you should have one. Whatever you're passing to, you should have one. This is scripture now. No. God is my refuge and strength. Ever present help without trouble. He will deliver me out of this trouble. Yes, yeah, someone will not come near me. I know that my redeemer lives and that in the head it will, start, uh, it will stand on earth. These three scriptures, many years ago, I combined it into one. The Lord is my strength and she my very help in time of trouble. For he has delivered me out of six trouble. Yea, the seventh one will not come near me. Then I can say my redeemer lives. That's three scriptures <laughs> that I combined into one. That one is my medication. When I don't have anything to use, the Lord is my strength and shield, My very help in times of trouble. For it shall deliver me out of these troubles. Yea, the seventh one will not come near me. Then I can say the Lord married the married man. That thing is in my heart. But if I shout the name of Jesus, that three scripture will bear witness in the realm of the spirit. Because there is no angel that disrespects the word of God. Are you with me? Put a scripture in your mind. We will practicalize this. Put a, find one. Find one. If you don't find one, use Genesis, uh, Matt, uh, Psalm 3, Psalm 23, verse 1. If you don't have for some entry verse one, you can use any of this. Put a scripture in your mind. Because that name respects his character. Put a scripture in your name. Put a scripture there. When you put that scripture in your mind, then put a need in your heart. Put a need. Put a need. Put a need in your heart. 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 Are you ready? Are you ready? Come on. Are you ready? Father, I wanted to prove this word by giving the testimony and bearing witness to the power of your name. <laughs> Bring a witness to the power of your name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I want to shout Jesus three times. With that word and that desire in your heart, shout Jesus three times. I want to go, Jesus! 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 You know what is happening? Faith, faith is being boosted. If you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, pray in the Holy Ghost for a few minutes. Pray, just pray. If you are not baptized, just pray. Just pray, just pray. Just pray. I want you to pray intelligently. And say, over this specific aspect of my life, I address you in the name of Jesus. 
<laughs> Lendo Sabala, Vege Brokosi Kata. Mengo Tikefe Lege Brakusi Kapalato. Mashaba Gada Brosi Feleke Prosi Kabalabosha. Manda Sofeleke Busha. Come on, I can't hear your voice. 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 Pick those battles, pick those challenges. And eat it on the head in the name of Jesus. So you two will bow. You two will bow. Sickness, you two will bow. For we deliver me out of six troubles. Yea, the seventh one will not come near me. In the name of Jesus. Kapalato veleke preke se brege de bokozo brege de bosha. Ekuti kete preke te prokoto beke te feke te pete. Jakuti te ke peke te freke te bokoto pala. Jeke te peke te prokoto feke te bokoto pala. Man palatole, man palatole, man palotele. Imbrakosike preloko zabaya. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I don't know why this is coming again and again. God is in the is in the prayer hands remote. If you understand my voice, I want you to take time to pray this week. Just go and look for that diary and begin to call on him again. Because the Lord will remember you. Amen. And he will show your family kindness. Amen. He will take away the reproach. Amen. And he will give you a new song. Amen. Yes, yes. He will comfort you. He will comfort you. To some, to somebody, to somebody, to somebody is to somebody said, "I will, I will give you favor like a king." Did you hear what I said? To somebody said, "I will give you favor like a king." I will give you favor like a king. He said, "I will give you favor like a king." We will give you favor like a king. By the authority of Christ, everything you have lost begins to recover them. I said, come on now, did you hear what I said? I said, by the authority of Christ, everything you have lost begins to recover them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody, you are receiving boldness in the spirit. 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 In the name of Jesus, uh, your voice will be loud again. 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 In the name of Jesus, I command every fear to disappear. No more coward. Uh, you are not a coward. You are not a coward. Receive power to do the will and the cancer of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Boldness to fight. Boldness to fight. Boldness to fight, boldness to fight for the lion of the tribe of Judah is roaring on your behalf. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, thank you, precious Father. Everybody, lift up your hands to heaven, lift up your hands to heaven. Kovalamba Epele, Kepusu Pralonda. Oh, the Lord is opening the channel of your spirit. The, ah, my goodness. My goodness. My goodness. I said, it's your turn. It's your turn. It's your turn. It's your turn. And when it's your turn, everything turns to you. It's your turn. It's your turn. It is your turn. It is your turn. Oh, I'm giving you a perfect gift. I'm giving you a perfect gift. I'm giving you a perfect gift. It's your turn. It's your turn. It's your turn. In the name of Jesus. Just keep quiet a minute. Keep quiet a minute. From the head to the toe. From the head to the toe. I bring you to be at power with destiny. From the head to the toe. Let sickness disappear in that name. From the head to the toe, let discouragement melt away in that name. From head to the toe, let destiny be opened in that name. From head to the toe, let there be a new strength increasing in your history in that name. I lift my voice 
I stretch my hands and I say, in the name of Jesus Christ, enter into a new season of your life. Thank you, precious Father. Father, I also ask, empower your people that they might be able to use your name. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. With this name, we pull down altars, family altars, demonic attacks. We pull down waters. We pull down water. Come on. Say, we pull down waters in that name. Come on. I can't hear. We pull down waters. Family waters in that. I can't hear. Say, we pull down waters. Family waters in that name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Father. We give you praise and honor. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Come on. Give God praise in the house. Let us just press further in the place of prayer. Oh, let us accustom ourselves with that name. The name of Jesus. The name that walk wonders. The name to pull down every satanic altar. Every evil handwriting. Every evil ordinance. Over your life, over my life. Over your children, over your job, over your ministry. Over that which God has said concerning you. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus that at the mention of the name of Jesus every knee shall bow every tongue shall confess oh kayendo skatele rakatom brikete razozom babando egadogo de gabante ezetele panta ekato bayande as the man of God has preached as he has taught us our authority in Christ Jesus. I want you and I to place that burden, that challenge, that trouble, that doubt, whatever it is at your feet of Jesus and stretch your hand to it in the name of Jesus. You mountain be moved. Rekateba. Oh, you barrenness be moved in the name of Jesus. You fear and doubt be moved moved in the name of Jesus. Mata Sekente. Oh, you sickness. Ikatelebando. Your name is sickness. But I come. Ikatelemba. In the name that is above sickness. In the name of Jesus. Dry up. Rado. Eke. Akababa. Oh, you joblessness. Matale Kayaba. And vamos in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you. Lord God, we bless you. We thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you. The word of God says, at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and all tongues shall confess. The word of God also says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of Jesus shall be saved. Father, we thank you. We bless you for your word. We thank you for your servants. Church, let us stretch our hands to our pastor, the man of God, the set man of this ministry, that the Lord God will replenish him. In the name of Jesus. Pray church. Pray stretch your hand to him. Father we pray for your son. Oh every virtue he has released by your spirit. Daddy we ask oh Lord that you will replenish. In the name of Jesus. You will replenish. You will protect him and his household. You will keep him and Lord all you have given to him. In the name of Jesus. Father, we say, be thou exalted. Let it be so, Lord, in his life. Oh, Lord, I will mount up high as eagles in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you for the testimony for your word. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name, Lord. 
Glory, honor, and adoration be to thy name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen. Church, please let us be on our seat. Online, on site, what a word. What a word. The authority of the believer. Tested weapons. What this message we have read today, I can tell you it is the foundation, one of the foundation, you know, things that we need to know as a believer. So we're not, we're not just crying and weeping over minor little, little things that we can literally take charge of. Last night, when I got home from work, I was in the living room. Thank you very much, Pastor. We are so grateful. We honor and we salute you. I was in the living room and the Lord was speaking to my heart that you need to continuously fraternize with this name. You need to get close to this God. And I was just thinking, and, you know, somebody just said to me that, you know, you see the people of the world, the witches, wizards, you know, they have their own altar and how they fraternize with their own altar. And then when they go to ask for anything, they get it. But we believers, we are not getting close to God. The name of Jesus is not, it's just something we just know Jesus. But pastor said, the name and the character. Do you know that Jesus you know his name, but his character, do you know it? And if you want that name to work for you, you must know the character. You must know whom you are calling and asking for something. You must know his name. And church, I just want to beseech us that we should get closer to God so that we are not just laughing stock where people of the world are calling upon their own altar and they get results. And you, that you are children of God, you call upon your Jesus and they are looking at you. Please, please, pack somewhere. What are you talking about? Who is this Jesus? May the Lord give us understanding. In Jesus' name. Yes, um, just a few announcements. Um, every Monday is Influence Church. We meet on Skype for prayer. We are a praying church. Please, if you're part of the church, you've been coming to church, we beseech you to meet with the leadership of the church so you can, you know, be sent um, our Skype platform where we meet every Monday between 9 p.m. and 10 p.m. for prayers, just one hour to tarry before the Lord. And also every Friday between 8 p.m. and 9 p.m. to pray. The Bible says that to this hand, men ought to pray and not to faint. So we are praying, church. We encourage everyone to please set your alarm so you can always join us Monday and Friday. And also, Graps, thank you, Minister Arunke. This morning, she encouraged us that we should always catch up with Graps. If you're not able to attend, please go back and watch. Pastor usually save you know, the, the, the message. So you can always go back to his Instagram page and watch, but it is much better if you are able to, you know, join every 7 p.m. Thursday. Um, so this Thursday, Pastor, let's grab this Thursday. <laughs> so um, this Thursday, <laughs> Pastor will be traveling, you know, to Uganda. If someone, if you are excited here, yeah, please shout hallelujah. Generation Builder, Pastor, and you know, few others, Pastor Paul and others will be going to Uganda to bless, you know, Uganda. And you know, they will, and Uganda will not remain the same. But the glory of God will fill the land in the name of Jesus. The Lord will watch over them, the Lord will go ahead of them and bring them back safe and sound in the name of Jesus. So this Thursday, there won't be grabs um for from next week. Um 7 p.m. every Thursday, you know, it's grabs. Um, also, children, Bible class is very, very important. Every Saturday, 5.30, um, our dear pastor, Pastor Lide is, you know, the, the woman of God who teaches the, 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 the children. Um, so you can 
ask for the Skype link so the children can always join. The Bible says that bring up the you know your child in the way of the Lord, and when they grow, they will not depart away from it. It is very, very important, you know, that God has given us these children as custodian, and we must not fail God. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. Um, also, I just want to encourage every one of us, as Pastor said, I'm just reiterating again that on the 20th of April, we all gather in church by 2 p.m. We'll be going out to evangelize and to reach out to people. There are so many people, yes, they've heard about Jesus, but they don't know Jesus. You can actually talk to them about Jesus, but more importantly, we want them to come into the house of the Lord where they can be nourished, they can be nurtured, they can grow into maturity. So please, I beseech every one of us, 20th of April, please mark your calendar and save that time. We meet in church, we pray, and then we set out. Um, some of us will be going to High Street and, you know, a few other places we will make the announcements, you know, um, on our WhatsApp platform. Um, church, I just want us to rise as we draw today's service to a close. Okay. <laughs> oh, Lord, help me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can you appreciate the man of God? Yeah. <laughs> we are five minutes beyond time today. It's not a normal thing. Praise God. Thank you. Please. Let me just close the service for you. I want to pray for every Titan, or for everyone that supported Generation Builders, and everyone that is trusting God for financial increase. Father, in the name of Jesus, HIC, we are not broke. <clears throat> we have more than enough. And the house that you will increase us again and again. Bills are paid. I said bills are paid. Again, bills are paid. We have favor. Our going out and our coming in is blessed. I also ask, oh God, for those trust God for job or better job, they are released. Give us intelligence to know where the job is and to be qualified for it. Give people career direction in the name of Jesus. People in career, promote them in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Father. We confide your blessings upon titles and givers. Everyone supporting this work in any way, they will not be put to shame. The God of this house will protect them in the name of Jesus. Everyone deserve for better life, you will give it to them. Thank you, precious Father. Thank you, precious Father. Somebody specifically, there's going to be a supernatural connection this week. God is going, this week, God is bringing somebody into your life. This week, somebody into your life. May you have wisdom to recognize them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. This week is blessed. Come on, shout, this week is blessed. In the name of Jesus. Let's share the grace together and fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion with the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, his goodness and mercy are pursuing us all the days of our life, and we are the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you.